If you're holding cash in the bank, then you might want to watch today's video because we're going to be talking about a lot of articles you probably notice at the moment this acceleration in the number of bank branches that are closing in fact hsbc has recently announced that it will be closing 25 percent of its branches and this is just in the uk as we go into 2023, Wells Fargo as well, closing a huge amount of branches, JP Morgan, um, branches right across the EU, the UK, the USA. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of a dive into each of these in today's video. In previous videos, when I've covered similar stories to this, I've always had the sort of feedback and comments from people, which I wanna address now before we get into the video which is that, Neil, it doesn't bother me. I don't care if uh, my branch closes. I don't go into branch anyway. And I get that that's true for some people, but I just wanna give you a couple of examples, um, not just from me, but of friends of mine, family, and you know comments that I've read here. So we'll start with the first one, which is an example from me, was that I needed to make a payment recently, and it was a fairly large payment, and the branch said that I had to physically go in to do it. They wouldn't allow me to do this over the phone or with internet banking, so I had to go to the branch. And because I moved to the Isle of Man, my branch where I had some money uh, still in it, because obviously I have a lot of bank accounts. I've talked about this before. I've got uh, 15, 16 bank accounts as of right now, because a couple of were closed, but I still had some money in this other bank account and they didn't have a branch on the island. So I actually had to get a flight over to the UK so that I could deal with this transaction. They wouldn't even let me transfer a larger chunk of it. They gave me a limit of 10,000 pounds per day that I could transfer. And because it had to be done in the next three days, I just couldn't get that done with, with the amount limit that they were giving me. Another time in the last year when I needed to go into branch was because my account had been locked for whatever reason it was. And they said I had to actually go into branch with some id and again these were accounts that i had still in the the uk whereas where i live now i've had to open new um, accounts with the the banks here and i say here i'm actually in thailand right now but i'm talking about the isle of man where i now live but i think the biggest issue that i want to get across to you all because I, again i keep seeing all these comments i don't care it doesn't bother me if my bank closes i do everything online etc etc well you think about what i've been talking about which is this central bank digital currency coming and you think about what i talked about from the past where each time we've had these crises and collapses in the banking sector what have people done straight away well they've ran to the bank and they've gone in line for hours at a time sometimes just so they can withdraw cash now think about this rationally and logically how are you going to rush to the bank and withdraw cash if there is no bank branch available? Remember, the government doesn't like people transacting in cash. They want everybody to be doing it digitally so they can track and monitor it. And that's what the CBDC is all about, this central bank digital currency. That way they can track all of the transactions that you do and put restrictions on it. But let's jump straight into the articles here then. And we'll begin with this one. Uh, we're gonna look at US bank closures, but also UK um, here. And then we'll talk about some of the CBDC and talk about the Euro as well. Uh, why US banks are closing down branches in record numbers. So US banks closed a net, call it 3000 branches during 2021. We're just waiting for the 2020 to figures to come through now with financial institutions shuttering almost 4,000 branches. Uh, net closures were up 38% from the previous record of 2,126 in 2020. So it was Wells Fargo who led the pack in branch closures last year, shutting down on net 267 retail locations. So let's just look at some of the reasons here. Since the pandemic, an increasing number of banking customers around the world rely on mobile and or online banking. 
41% of consumers say that they bank primarily via mobile app, while 26% now say they prefer to use their computers. And yeah, I think that is true. I, I do agree with that. And I do 99% of my banking using my phone or my laptop. It, it depends what I'm actually doing. But you can't rely on it 100% of the time because there are certain things that you, you, know, you need to actually go into branch for occasionally. And these sort of things can vary. Um, I can give you an example from earlier um, last month, should I say, and that was I needed some bank statements that had a stamp on them from the branch. So how can you do that online when they want it to be a verified statement in order for an application that I was doing? What about for people who are applying for new mortgages and the bank wants verified bank statements from the bank if you're not doing your mortgage with that bank, of course, or perhaps you're buying a house. Um, a lot of you may have bought a house in the last five years and you, you put a deposit down. Well, if you're putting a deposit down on a house, you can't do that in one transaction using online banking. You actually have to go into branch to do that sort of a figure. So that's just three examples there where a actual branch location is required in most cases. And that's without even looking at the older generation, I'm, I'm being polite here to the older viewers, who some are just not very tech savvy, they can't get along with the online banking, there's often a lot of complications, sometimes it's difficult to set up and doing you know, two-factor authentication and face ID and all these other things. So a lot of people just don't like to, you know, they're not very tech savvy. They may not have a smartphone, for example. So I thought this example was interesting. This is from Self Financial, and they have made a dire forecast for US bank branches. So it predicts branches may become extinct by 2034. So they're saying 40,000 by 2027, and then plunged to as low as 16,000 by 2030. This is the same level as 1965. And then by 2034, all branches may be gone. And it's not just the USA, it's the, the UK as well. So this is what I was mentioning about HSBC. A quarter of its UK branches will be closed next year. And just bear in mind that during 2022 as well, HSBC closed 69 branches and more than 600 sites since 2015. This is the forecast of bank branches uh, being closed by, again, we always get the same year, 2030, but by 2034, according to the report, will be extinct. So how many have we seen them? Well, this shows the US by region and it shows the number of closures. July actually had the most, so July of 2021, but so did March and April, October had a lot. We're still waiting for the 2022 data here. So we have some other data as well here, uh, and they sort of generally fit the same trends, but some are slightly different. So this is from CNBC. Uh, bank closure trend is nothing new. In 2000, so again, this was a, a, a crisis, so it is kind of new. They're not quite linking the pattern here, which was 2000 was a recession, as was 2008. But uh, anyway, in 2000, there were 8,000 commercial banks in the United States. By 2021, just over half of them, so 4,236, were still standing. So that's a closure rate of 50% over that period, uh, 20 years. And it says, because this is another comment that comes up a lot, Oh, nearly it's only in rural locations. Actually, it's not. It says the closures are not limited to small banks in rural communities, as they're happening to large legacy banks in highly populated areas as well. So this is just a good example of how the banks are, are using excuses like people aren't coming in, there's no footfall, etc. But that's just not true. Because if you're anything like me, you've probably been into a, a bank branch in your main city or town recently. And the amount of time that you are queuing there, especially if you go into a big city where they may only have one branch left. Yeah, okay, it's usually a large branch and they've closed six or seven of their smaller branches. But each time I've gone in, I've been waiting at least 30, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour just to do, you know, an ID check or transfer a larger amount of money to, a, you know, whatever I'm doing with it, if it's an investment or something like that. So it's not exactly as they are saying, this is just an excuse that they are using. There's no footfall. Oh, sometimes we only get 20 customers in a day. Oh, sometimes we only get 50 customers in a day. 
Sure, I, I, okay. I believe that that may happen in some small branches, but it's a bit like the walk and talk last Friday that I did, where the BBC took that one retailer and said, wow, this has been the best year in retail since I started. But if they actually took it as a broad picture, and they took maybe a hundred retailers, maybe three of them would say, wow, this is the best year ever. But the other 97% would say, what are you guys smoking? This has been terrible. We've had lockdowns and we've had this, we've had that. And now we're going into a recession. Retail is terrible. But as I've covered a lot of times, this is what I believe is really happening. And it is that we're working our way towards a digital currency. And it's interesting to me that they keep putting out, and this is Bloomberg here, these articles on a regular basis saying the digital dollar is a long way from reality, the Treasury official says. But just remember, this happens a lot. They say things like, oh, there's no recession. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the inflation's transitory. Absolutely. It's not going to go above three or four percent. It will come back down. Next thing you know, you hit seven, eight, ten percent. They've also said there's no need for a CBDC, it just doesn't exist, the need for it uh, doesn't exist, and that they won't issue a CBDC without clear Congress executive support. Well, yeah, they've said that for other things quite recently, and they go ahead and do them anyway. But then they say this, which is unusual, regulators need to examine whether a CBDC would actually improve the speed or cost of real-time interbank payments which the Federal Reserve is aiming to introduce in 2023. <laughs> so, somewhat of a confliction here. My view is our global leadership doesn't come from our technology, she said in an interview to Bloomberg. It comes from our governance system, the rules that govern our financial markets, our rule of law, and the safety and soundness of our institution. Yeah, um, and the US military, perhaps? Maybe that's the other aspect, and the petrodollar which aren't really being mentioned, but uh, okay. She also says there's no current need. If after five or more years, many countries have introduced a CBDC, she added, that might become a factor in pushing the US to adopt one. But she emphasized the US government's study of a potential CBDC was mainly to be prepared for a need that didn't currently exist. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. And we've even got a comment at the bottom, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, has shown no urgency to decide the matter soon. But we looked at the HSBC closures in the UK. Uh, well, look at this. We've got a Bank of England statement here, which was from April of 2021, where they're talking about how they're going to introduce this CBDC. It is no surprise Rishi Sunak has wanted to do this since a, a long time now, way before he was prime minister. And he even put this out, so this was October 2022. He pushes heavily to introduce the CBDC. Of course, we went over all of this in a, in a previous article here. And then he made this speech where he said, we want to rewire the entire global financial system for net zero. Do you indeed? Uh, Chancellor Rishi Sunak addresses delegates at the COP26 summit, pledging to make the UK the world's first net zero finance centre. And then just last month, the Bank of England seeks applications for 200k CBDC wallet prototype. Well, guess what? I've actually got it here. It's already happened. So this was published on the 9th of December and the deadline or, or the closing date was the 23rd of December. So it's done. We actually had completed applications 20, 9 SME and 11 large. So with 20 applications there, you can be pretty certain it's going ahead. And what do we have here? Well, it says it's a five month, as you can see here, a five month project. So let's just say it launched on the 1st of January, for example. By the end of May or by the 1st of June, uh, the project will have been completed. Now, I said I'd mention the euro as well. So this is the ECB, European Central Bank, again, just two weeks ago in December. It's funny how this stuff happens in December, isn't it? When everyone has just 
broken up for their Christmas holidays. Uh, in January 2023, in the context of the investigation phase of the Digital Euro project, the ECB will invite market participants to take part in market research, so again, just like the UK, to obtain an overview of options for the technical design of possible, they've always got to put this word in, uh, digital euro components and services. This will provide important input for an implementation plan doesn't say a possible implementation plan, it says a, uh, an implementation plan, a key deliverable of the investigation phase. The digital euro investigation phase is due to end in September 23. So again, not much longer after the UK. But I think they've got a very clear plan here for linking all of this together. It's all connecting to this date in the future, 2030. And what are they focusing mostly? Well, it's destroying the rural communities and the facilities, the, the access to all of these other services as we, as we have these huge conglomerates coming in and taking over and just destroying the small community, destroying the local businesses in those communities. And then these conglomerates set up overseas tax havens, uh, which is the thing that doesn't make any sense. This is why I don't like lobbyists and lobbying. The government obviously aren't thinking this through. You've got SMEs, small to medium-sized operations and local family businesses who receive the income from the community. They pay the tax to the government. They pay the tax to the community. And they let them get wiped out by these big companies who come in with all their multiple locations, tax havens and things like that, where that money doesn't go back into the, the local community. I mean, a little bit of it does in terms of paying wages and things like that. But a lot of the tax aspects of it will go offshore, they'll go overseas. So I do think it's short-sighted in a way a lot of this is done, but this is where we're moving towards these 15-minute cities. So it's the destruction of the rural communities and let's get everyone into these 15-minute cities, which is, is the very, very clear plan. This isn't me saying it, this is what the other different governments are talking about, especially in the EU, the USA, the UK and other Western nations, they're all talking about these 15-minute cities. Um, we talked just last week or the week before about the line being built um, where they took the city and they turned it into this one line that's, you know, quite high up. And they say that everybody, you know, you won't need to live in rurally or in these cities, bigger cities anymore. We're going to keep compressing the cities and making them smaller and smaller and taller and taller. So just think about what I've said today in terms of your banking facilities, the, the money, the savings, some of you, your life savings are in the bank. Let's put it this way if we're going to have some sort of a banking crisis it's likely to happen either this year 2023 or 24 25 uh, if we look at what's happening right now in terms of all the debt levels the highest we've ever seen derivatives the highest we've ever seen we have rising interest rates and a tightening cycle we're going to see a lot of companies collapse we're going to see a lot of banks actually collapse under the the weight of all of this bad debt that they've got so if you think you're just going to walk to the local branch and get your cash out, no, they're going to put restrictions as well, like they have done in the past. Oh, maximum you can withdraw is a thousand dollars per day or whatever they're going to say, you know, in terms of cash. Well, if you've got a lot of money in the bank, good luck to you getting it out. And that's why I always talk about having tangible, intangible, as well as returning, non-returning assets. You've got to understand all of these things in order to be well diversified and protect yourself for the future. All right, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. God bless.